Thanks. All right. Yeah, so I'm Corey, and this is Inspect the Uninspected. Um, I'm not going to actually debug any of your mobile sites for you today, but what I want to do is kind of provide you a toolbox, uh, regardless of your favorite flavor of tool, uh, but equip you with the knowledge of how you can go out and start doing some mobile inspection. Uh, so just real quick about me, I work at a company called HealthX. Uh, I contribute to the jQuery mobile uh, project. I've worked with Mozilla in the past. I've written a few things. But anyway, what are we going to talk about today is uh, a few things. First, we're going to talk about kind of the first steps when you're focusing on mobile development and kind of getting that mobile mindset when you're debugging. Then we're going to talk about how you use your regular desktop browser of choice to focus your mind towards the mobile debugging uh, scenario. And then we're going to talk about how you can get outside of the browser vendor's silos for mobile debugging and debug something like old Android or Safari if you're on a Windows device or uh, Nokia 900 uh, if you have one of those. Uh, and then we're going to talk about the promising future of mobile debugging or what it might be uh, someday. So first steps. Uh, the first steps we always do when we find a bug, especially on mobile, is we alert something. Uh, no, that's not right. Don't do that. Um, the first thing you should do when you're looking at any website, even if you don't have a mobile web, a mobile specific website, somebody's going to be looking at it on a mobile device. So you can use browser-based tools like webpagetest.org is one that's pretty fun. Uh, you can test more than just web, uh, mobile browsers on this, but so you could go to the demos jQuery mobile site and target an iPhone 4 with a 3G connection and see how quickly it loads. And when you get the results, it's got this waterfall of how it looks on a non-cached load and then a cached load and screenshots. So you can get kind of an idea of how your page performs, uh, even if you don't have a, like a, test, a whole bunch of testing devices, but you want to see how your, your, your stuff performs on mobile. Also, you can get uh, images of various devices using browser stack. Uh, just go there, put in your URL, and it gives you a bunch of snapshots. So this is kind of a first step to get an idea of what your web page looks like on mobile. Many of you probably already know what it looks like on mobile. But even if you don't have a mobile-specific site, these are very useful. So then let's talk about mobile or modern browser tools and how you can use them uh, for mobile. So let, yeah, let's just start. So Firebug is, uh, who uses Firebug in their day-to-day -day development? OK, a lot of people. It doesn't have any mobile-specific features per se, but it still has a lot of great features. And one thing that you'll see is common through most of these uh, that I'm going to highlight is you can dock it to the right or to the left and slide it back and forth. And you're going to have this responsive design mode, basically, so you can test what your, uh, what your site looks like on a different size screen within your Firefox browser and Firebug. So that's pretty basic, um, but you can still get an idea. So even though it doesn't have any mobile specific features, you can get an idea of what your site will look like on a mobile size screen. Uh, who uses Internet Explorer? Yes. There's a few, all right. So you probably know that with the new IE11, the F12 tools are actually really great. Um, there's, there's a lot of good things that come out of those. It does have mobile-specific features, um, which we'll talk about here in a second. So it's this emulation mode where you can emulate devices. I primarily use it to emulate old IE so that it can like automatically break my site for me. But you can also use it um, to do mobile. So if, if you target the device mode for um, Windows Phone, you can change between Windows Phone uh, 8 and Windows Phone 7 and the different IE 10 and IE 9 that are uh, respective of those. And you can see also you can change <coughs> excuse me, your, your uh, resolution and portrait and landscape. And, and it takes care of that for you in the browser, so you can kind of see what that looks like right there. So it's built into to Internet Explorer to have this emulation mode. So that's a really good first step. If, you use F12, if you're using the F12 tools, 
uh, you can really get a good idea of what your site will look like on a mobile device. Uh, who uses Safari? One, two, several, okay. So Safari has some pretty decent tools, and they also have remote debugging uh, for iOS Safari and web views, which is, excuse me, <coughs> which is really great. Uh, so it also has this responsive design mode built in when you go in and you uh, resize your browser. You can still inspect and find your breakpoints as they come across. And this is just like the other tools. And you can still get all of the <clears throat> power of the Safari developer tools while you're in there. But also, it has remote debugging. So on your mobile device, if you have, <clears throat> pardon me, if you have iOS, <coughs> you, have, uh, you can go to your settings, advanced web inspector, and en enable that toggle. And then when you connect that to your device, so this is actually an iPhone simulator, uh, but when you connect that to your Mac Safari, you'll get this ability to do remote debugging. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So I've got my uh, web page up in the iOS simulator. And once I go to Safari on the Mac, in the Develop menu up at the top, whatever iOS device you have connected, whether it's the simulator or not, it'll be available on the dropdown. And you can have, so here it's got the Safari tab that I want to inspect. I can select that, and it opens up the inspector, uh, which is inspecting the remote device. So that's pretty great. And if it also works on web views and uh, like something you've added to the home screen as well. So you still have that power of the dev tools connected to your remote device. Uh, let's move on. <clears throat> let's talk about the Chrome developer tools. Who uses Chrome? And several of us, yeah. Uh, pretty great features. We all know about those. We don't need to really get into each browser-specific tool set. But its mobile features are really cool, and uh, they're adding more great things uh, continuously. So one of, the, one of the things is devices emulation. So you can, they've got like 30 devices, I think, that you can pick from. And it emulates the screen size and everything right in your browser. It also has network throttling and remote debugging. Now let's take a look at what we can do with this device's emulation and network throttling. <coughs> so here you go. You open the inspector, and down in the bottom, you'll see there's this little phone-shaped thing, and that toggles this device's mode. And you click on that, then you can select your device. <coughs> Pardon me. Select your device, and you can change your device from there. And um, you can also rescale it, uh, so like change your responsive size so you can make it some arbitrary size. And you can also change the network throttling, which is very important because in general, at least for my user base, most of them don't have a super high fast LTE connection. Uh, so having a 3G connection <coughs> to test is very important to see how your site will perform. Uh, so you can do that right within the dev tools. <clears throat> Chrome also has remote debugging. So for Chrome on Android, to set up remote debugging, you have to enable developer mode, and then, which is like tapping the version 17 times or something like that. And then, and then you enable remote debugging. And once you've got that, uh, then basically you just have to hook up your phone to your desktop, and then you're able to get this remote debugger when you go to Chrome colon slash slash inspect. So when you go there, you get a list of all of the, uh, all of the devices that are connected and the tabs that are available to debug on that. So that's pretty great. So I just did that in this screencast, you'll see. And there's also another little phone image, which if you want to do anything with mobile, just click the little thing that looks like a phone. 
and then you get this screencasted across. So whatever's on your remote device is screencast, and then you can inspect it and see exactly what you're doing, just like you would in the DevTools anywhere else. So that's, that's Chrome developer tools, remote debugging. All right. What about Opera? So who uses Opera? Yeah? All right, so Opera, when I first started working in mobile, was my very favorite uh, developer tool set for m mobile debugging because of the Dragonfly dev tools, which don't really exist anymore but uh, because it's now a Chromium fork, but they were incredible. You could, just over your Wi-Fi wi network, you could de debug without plugging anything in. But anyway, so Opera now is Chromium-based, so you're going to see it's got the sim si similar feature set as Google Chrome, device simulation, remote debugging. One thing I didn't say, uh, the emulation tab, you can emulate touch events, the different user agents, which we saw. Uh, you can also change geolocation data and, and, and great things like that that are very useful for specific use cases in, in mobile. So here's Opera, uh, and this is when you go to inspect and you hit the little phone icon and uh, you get the devices mode, Again, you can select all these different model devices and different resolutions will be provided for you. And so you can see, sometimes it does say when you select a device, you have to refresh so that it gets it resolution right. But, <coughs> pardon me. Anyway, so that's Opera uh, devices emulation. Opera also has remote debugging on uh, at least on Opera for Android. If you go to opera colon slash slash debug, uh, then you can enable debugging. Uh, so you can see this little checkbox there. And it also has instructions on how to set up port forwarding uh, using the Android debug bridge. So uh, <coughs> let's just see how that goes. So I've enabled uh, remote debugging on my device. So that's that image on the left there. Then I go in and I forward my ports, I pop back into Opera on localhost 9222, which is just the default one. You could change the port. Uh, but then you get a list of inspectable tabs on your Opera device. So you go in, you click inspect, and then Opera is like, are you sure you want to connect to this? Because it doesn't, you know, it could be somebody trying to hijack your computer or something like that. Uh, so you have to confirm that. And then, uh, yeah, unblock. And then you can ins you get an inspector, and it goes directly uh, to inspecting your remote device. Uh, so familiarity of the Opera Dev tools on a remote device. So that's great. Firefox developer tools. These are all these are all very similar story, right? Uh, they've got great tools, and they want them to be accessible on their mobile device. Firefox, again, has remote debugging, has the responsive design tool, which I'll show you here in a sec, and Web IDE. Uh, Web IDE right now is focused on kind of writing and deploying to Firefox OS devices, but in the future, it could potentially do other things. But we're not going to talk about Web IDE uh, anymore. So Firefox developer tools, again, you can slide it right or left. And then there's this responsive design mode. Uh, so you click the little responsive design mode icon, and you can change uh, your resolution, switch from portrait to landscape. There's also uh, like a little screenshot that you can do as well, which is pretty great. Um, so I, I use a lot when I'm doing um, any of my initial work with a mobile site just to kind of see what's going on. They do have remote debugging as well. So again, you enable it on your Android device. You have Firefox for Android. In the settings, there's uh, developer options, and you can enable remote debugging in there as well. And then also, on your desktop uh, tools, you enable remote debugging and uh, with that little checkbox that you see there. Again, you have to forward your ports like you had to do with Opera. Uh, once you do that, then you have the ability to actually debug Firefox on Android with Firefox, 
So I've got my Firefox uh, on Android fired up over there, and then I go back to Firefox. Uh, I've already put forwarded my ports in this example. And then in the web developer menu, there's a connect uh, option. <coughs> and that connect option defaults to port 6000, which is pretty great. And uh, that's because that's where we forwarded the ports. And once you click connect, your device is going to get a prompt. Uh, do you really want to allow incoming connections? And then you say yes. And you select the tab you want to inspect. And then it'll pop up. Uh, your uh, developer tools right there, and you begin inspecting right away. So that's Firefox. That's also Opera and Chrome and Safari, Firebug and F12. But the basic thing there is it's got to be a modern device, right, and then its own set of developer tools, right? So it's Chrome is Chrome, Firefox is Firefox, and that's great. I mean, those are awesome first steps, but what happens if you have, like I mentioned earlier, old Android, or what if you want to remote debug an actual Windows phone or a Nokia 900? Then you have to find something else that will allow you to get some access to either the DOM or the console on these remote devices. So I'm just going to highlight uh, two of those that I think are pretty easy to use and also powerful enough that you can get a lot out of them. The first one is just jsconsole.com. It's a so it's a browser-based tool, and you it basically runs as this proxy server that you put this uh, script on your in your remote target, right? So and then put that on your phone or your iPad or whatever it is you want to debug, and have an identifier on there that then runs back to jsconsole.com, and you can talk to the, the console of your remote device. So you do that with this command, like colon, listen, and then the identifier. So here the identifier I used was cheese. Uh, so listen for cheese, and then on your remote device, if you can see it there in the middle, so on your target script, uh, I use this, you use the remote JS and then the query string of whatever that target parameter was. So in this case, cheese. Uh, so when, then when you load that up, you get this warning, which is a good warning because you don't want to leave this on in production. But it's like, hey, just don't forget you have the script in here. Uh, so that's good. And then you get this connection. And once, once you get connected, uh, you have access to the, uh, just a console on the, on the device. Um, so here's an example where I'm on the jQuery, uh, jQuery mobile docs demo site, uh, and uh, I want to find this, the HTML of that H1. And it returns the string demos, which is exactly what I would expect. But you can imagine that you can then manipulate the CSS or read the CSS uh, off of this remote, remote device and find out. Why, why my fixed header isn't in the right place, or something like that. Uh, so th this is a very powerful tool, uh, and I like it uh, for, 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 for many reasons, but the, it's a good tool. But what's better, in my opinion, is Winery. Winery is kind of the place to go if you uh, need to do any remote uh, inspection on devices that aren't in the browser silos or even if they are, um, it's, it's a good one to use. So it stands for Web Inspector Remote. It's an NPM package, and it gives you this command line, uh, that, this command that you just say, winery. And then it starts up this local server. And then the server provides a target script that you can add on your device or your target uh, HTML. And then it also provides this debugging client. So it's kind of like a stripped down version of uh, the WebKit toolkit tools. So you've got elements and console and network and all these things that are very important when you're debugging. And you can get that access to uh, any device that you can put this script on, which is incredible. Um, there, there are some tricks, like if, if you want to debug on, uh, like on your local Wi-Fi network 
and your server's not set up to actually project your IP out, uh, then you can tie it to like this bound host, and it's going to actually then pro project it so you can use your IP and connect to it. And then you add your target script to your source. Your target script to here would be you know, your, your IP address. And by default, uh, Winery runs on 8080, but you can configure that as well when you start it up. Uh, so you get your target script, and then there, that uh, fragment at the end to target is just whatever identifier you want. So cheese, like in the earlier example, or some GUID if you really want to kill yourself. Um, but so this is Winery in action. So I've got Winery running on <clears throat> this HTML. Uh, yeah, that's nice. And I'm scrolling to show that it's real. And I click on my target, uh, because once it's connected on Winery, it gives you this little link that's the target. And once you get that, it redirects you right to the elements panel, and you can begin inspecting. So uh, this is on Chrome for Android on a Nexus 5, but it could be on a Droid X running the Android uh, web view. And you can get access to the DOM on this remote device and figure out what's going on. Uh, and so it works across platforms. As long as you have access to this server, uh, you're, able to, you're able to debug. And it's, it's very powerful. I would just like to say that if you're going to do anything with remote debugging, Winery should probably be where you start, because it's so powerful to be cross-platform like that. So I did talk about the promising future. Um, so let's talk a little bit about remote debugging protocols. So every browser vendor has some sort of protocol that they can use to communicate to their browser dev tools from their remote devices. Uh, there's some effort, maybe, someday, to have a unified one. And then you can imagine that you have whatever your favorite tool is, you can debug any target. So I say this happens someday, and you really like uh, Eclipse for debugging. And you put a plugin in that then allows you to debug anything remotely from Eclipse. or. Visual Studio or the Chrome DevTools, Firefox DevTools, or whatever, you know, and you, you never have to leave the comfort of what you're used to, and you can debug all of these targets because they're, uh, you know, they talk to each other. That's kind of this, what would be a hopeful future, I guess. But there is one cool experiment that's uh, from one of the guys on the Firefox DevTools team, and it's kind of this glimpse of this unification. It's called Firefox DevTools Adapters. And I've used it to, to debug with the Firefox DevTools, Firefox, Firefox OS, Firefox on Android, which you would imagine you can do with the Firefox DevTools, but also Chrome, Chrome for Android, iOS Safari, and I assume you could probably do Opera as well, since it's, it's a Chromium fork. Uh, so when you're able to use your favorite tool, to debug things, it makes you kind of happy. Uh, so, but it's still an early experiment. There's still lots of manual configuration. Um, so not, not in addition to the normal port forwarding, there's a node proxy uh, to get it to communicate right. And then if you want to debug Safari, there's this project from Google that is called iOS Debug Bridge or Debug Proxy. It's on GitHub. But you run this, and you can forward to the Chrome DevTools uh, Safari. So that works on Mac and Linux. But this is then, so then that step forwards Safari to Chrome, and then the Chrome bridge to this. So there's a bunch of steps. But in the end, uh, there's the, just basically this add-on for Firefox that will then fire up the Firefox DevTools and let you uh, debug any of these other targets. So here's just a quick example of me using the Firefox DevTools, this Firefox DevTools adapter, uh, which I'm starting right here. The, they're firing up nightly with the DevTool or the add-on. And then so that on my Android device there is actually 
uh, Chrome for Android. So I'm debugging Chrome for Android with the Firefox dev tools. And uh, I just think that's pretty great. And you can do it for all of these other things. But I think that, I mean, right now it's a bunch of work. But the concept of being able to inspect, uh, being able to use Winery uh, without having to have a server proxy or something like that, you know, would be, is incredible. So that's the, the last of my slides. Uh, so do, do you have any questions or anything, any, any, any concerns, anything else? Any water? Well, that's all I had. Oh, there, oh, wait, there was a question. Sorry, the lights. Okay, can you talk a bit about uh, the jQuery mobile device lab and what's sort of in the future with the device lab and if you're using any new tools or? Yeah, my jQuery mobile device lab is the six devices I have left over at my desk. Uh, I don't know exactly what uh, what Alex and Gabriel have, and Jasper, what do you? Yeah. So he says that there's like 40 or 50 devices that the foundation has, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't personally have any of those. So, so yeah, we do test on a lot. I know we test on a lot. So. Yeah, and Winery is very, uh, very powerful for remote debugging for sure. Is there another question? No? All right. Thanks.